Well, good evening. Um, just wanted to do a uh, a short video looking at the RF amplifier for the antenna coming in and uh, the two bandpass filters, uh, and then I'll uh, I'll put that information up on the blog. So, um, very simply, just to look at what we did for the uh, the amplifier, it was a pretty straightforward one. Nothing sort of um, too spectacular there. Just decided to go for a simple voltage divider bias class A amplifier uh, based around a, a 2N3904. So 3904 um, with a couple of uh, a couple of sort of rules of thumb slash sort of uh, gimmies. For example, I've just arbitrarily set the collector current to be 10 milliamps. Uh, we'll use a beta of uh, 100, and then just using or setting the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC. Um, so just sort of uh, some some constraints to start the design work. So looking at um, RE, our emitter resistor. Um, so again we've, we've set this to be a tenth of VCC. Um, there is going to be a small voltage drop across that decoupling uh, resistor there at 100 ohms. So at 10 milliamps we're going to have one volt across that. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to have too much more than that. Um, it was, if it was going to be a higher current amplifier, I'd probably drop that down to 10 ohms, but I'll keep that at 100 ohms for now and just um, accept there'll be a 1 volt uh, voltage drop across that. So working out then, um, this point here will effectively become my, my VCC level. So 13.8 minus 1 volt equals 12.8. So getting back to our emitter resistor, one tenth of 12.8 volts divided by 10 milliamps through there, assuming that our emitter current is essentially the same as our collector current. The only difference is uh, with our collector current, we'll also have added to it um, the base current, um, which comes out to be 128. So our nearest standard value we'll use will be 120 ohms. So that'll be our value for our emitter resistor. R2, this resistor here, will be the voltage at this point plus uh, 0.7 volts for that forward biased um, junction there. So again, working out the voltage um, at this point, a tenth times 12.8 plus our 0.7. Now the, the current going through here, to make this voltage divider biasing nice and stiff, we want to have at least 10 times the base current flowing through here. So in this particular resistor here, there will be 10 times flowing up. At this point, it will be joined by the base current flowing through this um, R1. So there will be 11 times the base current through here. So 10 times through here, 10 plus 1 equals 11 times through here. So again, coming back to this value of this resistor here, we're going to use a tenth times 12.8, gives us the voltage there, plus 0.7 volts, and then just using um, Ohm's law, that voltage divided by 10 times our base current. Now the base current, as we know, um, is IC, our collector current, divided by beta. So 10 milliamps divided by 100, do the maths, comes out at 1980 ohms, so we'll use a standard value of uh, 2k ohm. R1, our um, top resistor there of the voltage divider biasing, so the voltage at that point, so should we get that in the in the picture there, is going to be VCC, which we said is going to be 12.8, minus the voltage at that point there, divided by 11 times the base current. So we'll do the we'll just do the substitution there, 12.8 minus our emitter voltage, so a tenth times 12.8 plus 0.7, that gives us the voltage across that resistor divided by 11 times the base current, or 11 times IC, our clicked current, divided by 100. Comes out at 9836, so we'll use 10k ohm. So that's pretty well then set up our voltage divider biasing for that particular network, R1, R2 and RE. Um, now for, for feedback, um, we're going to try and, rather than having this running just full gain and then just accept that the gain will drop off as the frequency increases. Uh, we're going to try a little bit of negative feedback there to flatten out our gain.
but in doing so increasing our bandwidth. Um, but before doing so, I just want to double check that our coupling capacitors, so we've got a coupling capacitor coming in on the input, we've got one on the output, and then one that we're just using to bypass our emitter resistor. Just want to double check that those are less than 100 ohms um, at our lowest frequency of operation. So noting that um, capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi frequency times capacitance. We can then work out, um, notionally I'm using 100 nanofarads, it's just a nice easy one to grab out of the junk box. So just double checking what that's going to work out to be. So 1 over 2 pi, 3.5 megahertz, that's the lowest frequency we'll be using for this, times 100 nanofarads comes out at 0.45 ohms, so we get the big tick there, so more than happy with that. So coming back to our negative feedback, so this resistor here and this capacitor, we definitely need to have the capacitor there, otherwise we're going to interfere with our biasing network. We're going to have a DC voltage running through there, which we don't want. So we want this to be an AC activated feedback circuit. So we're going to have a capacitor in there. Now its reactance, its capacitor reactance, is going to be a function of frequency. So what I initially did is I threw in um, just the starting point, uh, I think it was something like 2k ohms and 100 nanofarads, um, and then used LT Spice to plot out what the frequency response was going to be um, between, I think I initially used uh, 1 meg and 30 megs just to see what it's going to look like. In the end, um, LT Spice was suggesting that 1K and 10 nanofarads was going to be the best combination. So what I did is I built the circuit up and then I uh, used a resistor substitution wheel to look at what resistor value there would give us the, uh, the best compromise. And that turned out to be 510 ohms. So what I mean by that is, and we'll have a look at the scope in a minute, the 10 nanofarad capacitor in series with the 510 ohm resistor, these two here, gave the best combination for overall gain, uh, as well as a flat frequency, or as flat as I could get, uh, frequency as response across um, across the frequency range before it started to drop off. Um, so all in all, that wasn't too bad. So if we just look at the scope here, we've got on the circuit our frequency generator coming in through on the uh, uh, the um, antenna input, going into our amplifier, and then coming out on the scope. So we're just scoping what will be the input to the bandpass filters. And we can see there, um, and I didn't mention it in the circuit, sitting across the output is a 10 kilo ohm resistor with the wiper arm um, being the output feeding through to our, our bandpass filter. And as we can see on the scope there, we can vary the amplitude. Uh, or we can simply turn off the amplifier as a, as a whole, so now it's, it's fully bypassed. So whatever's coming in through the antenna ramp is going, say again through the antenna, is going straight through to the bandpass filters. Um, so we can have here, we've currently got on our SIGGEN um, 3 megahertz. And if we can sort of see as we crank that up, that the overall gain itself, so that's now at 17 megs. This one's only going to go up to 20 meters. So you can see here on the on the scope that amplitude wise, it's not too bad. Um, that's now 4 megs, 3 megs. Um, significantly better than we would have had. That's now 17 megs, 14, if we hadn't used. Um, that feedback network there. If we hadn't used that, then we would have um, quite a significant variation between uh, 3 megs and, and 14 megs. So anyway, that's um, it was a pretty straightforward. It didn't really go to too much more depth or in terms of the design work, just a, um, a quick and simple um, amplifier there. And what I didn't mention, um, just using LT Spice, uh, the best inductor that I decided to throw into there was one microhenry turn out to give um, the best response there on LT Spice and as we're seeing there on the scope um, not too bad not seeing any um, any problems with sort of resonant frequencies um, causing um, spurious outputs and the like so the next thing I wanted to talk about were the two um, the two bandpass filters here uh, 
it's a bit of a mess at the moment. This will be tied up later on. This is just purely for experimenting. Uh, we've got a the yellow cores are the 20 meter bandpass filter, and the red cores are the 80 meter bandpass filter. So the design of those, um, like I've done many times in the past, um, used as as guidance and in, in design material appendix two out of the book the solid state design for the radio amateur um, if people can get their hands on that I, I find that to be a, a very useful um, textbook and for providing and I can't really because of copyright I'm not going to um, sort of go through it but some good material there covering um, all things sort of amateur radio when it comes to amplifiers and receivers and transmitters and the like but it's a, it's a good reference book if you can get your hands into it so anyway appendix 2 talks about the design of bandpass filters and gives a couple of formulas which you can then use to derive um, this particular circuit here for a bandpass filter. So for 80 meters um, it turns out that we need uh, 82 picofarads here and 8.2 picofarads that's the, uh, the closest standard value for that one uh, and 82 picofarads on the end a couple of inductors and a couple of um, capacitors in parallel with those so the inductors themselves turn out to be using the red core, the T68-2, uh, using 38 turns to give us 8.23 uh, microhenries. Resonating in parallel with those, we've got two capacitors, uh, and we, we need to have an overall capacitance of 133 picofarads. Now what I've done, and uh, excuse me for just sort of jumping backwards and forwards, you can see there that um, for the 80 meter one, which one we're just talking about, you can see the a fixed capacitor, and then in parallel with that is a, uh, a trim capacitor. That trim capacitor is roughly 0 to 40 picofarads. So if we were now to come back to, um, I hope that was in focus here. Apologies if, if it wasn't. So if we were to come back to here again, um, we can see that what I've elected to do to get an overall capacitance of 133 picofarads, um, I'm using... Uh, 120 picofarads in parallel with, like I say, that 0 to 50. I think it's subtly less than that, but it's, it's roughly that. Um, and we'll talk about trimming these in a sec, but suffice to say, that's the overall circuit there for the 80 meter bandpass filter. The 20 meter bandpass filter, um, same configuration but different values. Uh, the two outer capacitors are 15 picofarads. The coupling one between the two tuned circuits is 1.5 picofarads. And our inductors are the yellow T68-6. We need 20 turns on that to give us 1.88 microhenries. And in parallel with those is a 44 picofarad capacitor. And what I've opted to do is just have a, a fixed 10 picofarad capacitor in parallel with, uh, again, those two trim pots. Now... Something I've mentioned before, and I want to, want to go over it again because it's um, it's quite important, is the tuning of these. I've drawn a bit of a diagram here. Those trim pots are akin to this this larger sort of capacitor here. They uh, they spin around and around in circles. They just keep on going around and around and around, and they have a point where the two plates are fully meshed. In other words, you're now getting maximum capacitance. And there'll be a point where they are fully unmeshed, where you'll get the minimum capacitance. And there'll be a point on one side where you get a, um, where you'll have uh, a capacitance somewhere between maximum and minimum going one way, and then conversely, exactly the same going the other way, going from a minimum through to a maximum. So when you're peaking these two uh, tank circuits here, we want to have it that on the scope you're getting a double peak. And, and what I mean by that is, if you find yourself, and we'll come back to this, adjusting your, your trim pot, and you're going like this, you're going like this, and it's getting greater and greater and greater and greater and greater, and then it's starting to drop down, getting less and less and less and less and less, coming up this other side, getting greater and greater and greater and greater, less, less, less. You've got... Um, too, too much capacitance. So you can see here the overall capacitance is reducing at this point and then coming down the other side. So if you find yourself you've got a single peak 
and it's occurring when the capacitance or the capacitor, the trim capacitor, is at the minimum capacitance, then you've got too much capacitance. So the suggestion there is would, would be to reduce one of those two fixed capacitors. Um, and I've had it certainly had it in the past where I've had to sort of fiddle around trying to find an appropriate fixed capacitor in parallel with my two trim pots because these capacitors themselves have um, a tolerance. Conversely, if you have a, a similar situation where you've only got a single peak but it's occurring at the maximum capacitance position, so we've got a lesser capacitance, greater, greater, it's peaking, it's peaking, and then it's dropping down again. Here you can see it's peaking as you're getting maximum capacitance. In other words, you don't have enough. You need to add capacitance in. So you need to increase those um, a little bit. So what I'm, what I'm, where I'm driving to is you want to get to a point where if you know you've got the right amount of capacitance is you have a point somewhere either on this side or on the other side where you have a peak. So if we were to start somewhere down here, we would start to peak. Okay, it peaks and then it suddenly starts to drop down again as you go through either um, minimum capacitance or maximum. So it's dropped down a bit and then it starts to rise again. It peaks and then it starts to drop down again and around where we go. So that's what I'm trying to indicate here. If you have this situation, then you know that the peak here or the peak there, depending on which side of, I don't, I don't want to call it zero, but which side you're on, you've got maximum gain. You've got maximum, uh, you've, you've, you've got that resonating as, as well as you can get it. So that's something to look out for. You've got a single peak, either at max or minimum capacitance, you need to go and adjust these two capacitors here. Um, conversely, if, uh, if you have a double peak, then that's good. So these two fixed capacitors um, are about right and your combination with the trim pot um, is allowing you to, to peak that. So that's just something to, to, to keep an eye out when you're um, designing and peaking um, tuned circuits with, with variable um, trim pots. Um, right, so that's all I wanted to talk about there. Uh, just like I say, just a quick video just to look at um, that amplifier there. Um, and now I think we're in a situation where we can probably get on and um, start to look at some of the software. So that'll be the next step. Um, the only thing I need to do now is to remove uh, that test wire here that was taking the audio out from those two uh, isolation transformers and it was being fed to this little test uh, amplifier here. That, that can all now disappear. Um, we'll probably keep that amplifier there for now. Um, just in case we need to increase or to amplify um, the output of our Tensi over here. So that's the next step. We'll, uh, like I say, disconnect that black wire. We'll now take that audio through to the input on the um, audio shield or um, panel, I think it's called, for the, the Tensi. Um, and then we can look at um, putting some additional software um, into the, the Tensi to, to start doing the, the DSP on that. So that'll be the next steps. Um, got a couple of business trips coming up over the next few weeks, so in and around those I'll try and do some more. So apologies now if uh, the next couple of vids is going to be a bit of a gap, but uh, it's unfortunately out of my control. Any questions please again just sing out. Um, if you find this useful, um, give us a thumbs up. I, uh, I find that quite useful just to, get a, to gauge um, if I'm sort of hitting the right point or not on these videos. So um, uh, any feedback is certainly most welcome. Anyway, I'll say 73s and uh, I shall put these two uh, pages up on the blog for people who want to pull them off. Okay, cheers all. See you soon.